There's some powerful new features in Photoshop. The key thing is you need the beta. And if you've got Creative Cloud, what you need to do is go obviously to the Creative Cloud, go here to the apps, and then down to beta apps, and then you'll see Photoshop beta. And just click open. So once you've done that, you will be able to access the new features of Photoshop beta. The key thing to do, just go here. You've got filters, parametric filters. It's not in the window. Would be nice if it was there, but it's not. What you need to do is go to parametric filters and you will see all of these parametric filters. You've got here your filters, so you can create your own filters. That's another great feature of this new parametric filters, but you need the substance tools to do that. If you expand this out, add your own parametric filters. Unfortunately, I haven't got that, so I can't add my own filters. But what you've got, you've got this basic set of filters. Some really good ones. Some, of course, really fairly old fashioned filters. Still, the great thing about it, simply just click and then try. And you can see as you click there, it will then apply it. And there's the first one, black and white. I mean, it creates an interesting black and white effect very quickly with your image. Now, of course, you could create something similar, maybe with a bit of noise and of course, adjustments. But still, you've got a lot of different features here, such as properties. You've got presets in all of the parametric filters so you can save as well as use some. There's not many presets given, two or three at most. And you can select one, so something like negative. And then if you want, once you've set something, change things, you can click here and add your own preset, which makes it really easy if you've got some great effects that you want to keep and use in future projects. In this case, you can then change the texture. You can also change the brightness. The processing is not instantaneous. It's a bit slow, a bit clunky, really obviously depending on the size of the image. If you've got a very big image, obviously it's going to be probably a bit slower. But also what you've got is you've got this option here for transform, which I think is one of the best features about it in many ways. It'd be nice if there was a mirror option, but there isn't. But you can scale it and you can see it flips it very quickly over the other way. Now it might be easier just to type in a value, say 0.51, and you can see what happens. It basically puts four, obviously it's halved it. So it's half the image, so you've got this lovely effect there. Also you can offset it, so you can just enter 23 and just shift it slightly. And again, it takes a few seconds to process, but you can see now it's been shifted slightly. You can also use these repeat options, fairly similar, of course, to the scale. So you could put like four, and then again, it will take a few seconds to process, and you can see the result of that. Great way of creating some very interesting pattern designs very quickly. You've also got this option, technical parameters. Many of them have got this. You can change the luminosity as well as the contrast. So you can just reduce it down, maybe make it slightly less contrast, maybe change the luminosity, make it slightly darker. So just reduce it down and you can see the result of that. Each and every time you apply a parametric filter, you'll notice what you get. Over here, you've got layers, smart filters and parametric filter. However, there is a slight issue with this in that if you go and now apply another parametric filter. If you just go there and I'm just going to select another one, not that one, but say chromatic. So you just click there and you can see what happens. Just produces that. But you'll notice in your layers, you've still only got one parametric filter. You've lost your black and white or whatever other filter you had. So if you want, you need to, of course, maybe create another layer and apply that effect to that. That's one way of doing it. Or you can go to the parametric filter and you can simply hold down the ultra option key and drag. And as you drag, it will du should duplicate and create another parametric filter. So it takes a bit of time to process it. And now you can see you've got two. Obviously in this case, it's the same filter effect, but you can always go back to parametric filters. And this time let's go for another one like duotone. So click there and it will then create a duotone effect along with that, obviously, color aberration effect or chromatic aberration. And again, you've got modifications here. Now, some of these filters are fairly basic, but you can use them in many different ways to create some really interesting effects, especially combining with the transforms. So don't just sort of think, oh, that filter 
what does it do? Just creates a duotone. It does actually create a lot more, especially combined with this transform. Now you'll notice in many of them, it's got randomized. Most of the filters for some weird reason have no, it has no effect. So you can click it, doesn't do anything other than process it again. And let's just go to another one. So let's go for distortion this time. Again, this will over override that original one. So it's gone. And you can then just change the big glitch, change the big glitch amount and so on to actually see more of the image. And also change small glitch. Now some of them make very little sense in terms of the terminology, I think sometimes it's. So red intensity, you can guess what's gonna happen. It's gonna get redder now, actually more green. <laughs> Even there you can see there's a few minor issues. But again, you've got all these presets. Again, you can select maybe like warping which is slightly misspelled. There is obviously clearly a case that this is a beta and hopefully things will be modified at some point. Well, at any point, of course, you can always go to layer and you can flatten image. You've also got the option, of course, with this, before you do any flattening, you've got here parametric filters. All smart filters have this option at the side. So you can go here and you can double click. Double click and it will bring up the panel with blending modes. So you can change the blending mode. So instead of going with, say that, you can go with lighten and you can see you get the effect, but using the lighten as the blend. And also you can change your opacity as well and just click okay. So literally millions of different effects can be created using this approach. Well, if say you've, you're happy with it, you're happy with it, you can go to layer and you can then flatten the image. So you've got this design now. And of course you can then continue. You've got here half tone, it's a really good effect. So again, you just, just try it out, just click it. Most of these you can experiment, find the general working, how it works fairly quickly. And you can see you've got dot and you've got stripe. Not many options. Be great if it had circle, but it doesn't. So with stripe, you can see obviously it's gonna be a line based one. And you can modify the size as well as the color as well. So if you want a green blue one, you can use that. And also you've got exactly the same as before, contrast, and you've got your transforms as well. And also rotation, so you can rotate it to create some obviously interesting designs going that way instead of the original direction. For me, some of the more interesting ones are like things like pattern. I mean, of course you can create patterns in Photoshop in a number of ways, particularly the library feature. But here, pattern, just click that and it will create a very basic pattern. It's not the greatest of patterns. Unfortunately, there's no features you think, oh, it'd be nice to have a circular pattern or whatever. You've got lots of different ones for position random, rotation, rotation random, rotation, random mask, scale, and all those sort of things. But there's no option for seamless, which would be very nice. Unfortunately, it doesn't offer that. But so you go for random there, X random, and you can see what happens. It generates a very jumbled up, image very quickly, which I think is quite an interesting effect that you can of course use maybe on multiple layers to build up a very complex design from a single image. Also you've got offsets as well. And also now in this case, you've got randomize. So you just click there and again, it takes a few seconds to process. And you can see in this case, it does actually do it. There's very few filters where that randomize actually is of much of a help. Another issue you might find, and I think this is one probably one that lots of people might have an issue with, is you can go for this one, which I actually think is also very useful for creating some interesting effects. You can go for draft, and in this case, it's probably not gonna be very different, slightly more blurry, but it's quicker. And it's great for if you wanna sort of try out things. So you try it and think, oh, you know what? Yes, I really like that. Got draft, super quick, but then you go for ultra. Now ultra goes to a certain resolution. It may still not be the level that you want. So you've gotta re realize that it's not perfect. It would be nice if there was an ultra, ultra feature or just basically keep it as the resolution. That would be really nice. It's got some interesting effects that just add some texture, such as rain filter. So you can click that. And in this case, unless it comes up, occasionally comes up with the odd message like that. Now you'll notice what happens when you create this layer. Sometimes it actually creates another additional layer. Very strange feature. I don't know if that's a bug, but certainly a feature that's you can, of course, use it in different ways. But you can see here, you've got this rain effect and you can change the angle, rain density, so you can create some quite interesting noise designs, as well as combine it, of course, you can apply multiple rain. So again, different angles. 
So three or four, 10, 15 layers of this rain. Change of darkness, again, transforms, and much, much more. The only pity, again, it's slightly slow, which might be slightly frustrating. But you've got this now with this design. There's also others. So you've got here, let's just go to another one. Let's try Scratch. And you've also got Snow. Personally, it's probably fairly similar in many ways. But this one's an interesting one. The only criticism I have with it is that it seems to create this edge, which I'm not certain what it, that's really there for. Slightly odd. It'd be nice if it extended all the way. I mean, obviously, afterwards, you can always crop it. But it's a pity that it even adds that edge. It's very strange. Also, you've got this one, Pixelate, which is a nice one. So Pixelate, just click that, and you've got Pixelation. Gain. Very few, obviously, features. You've got pixel size, and you've, got, you've still got all these transforms. So you can gain, use that to create some interesting combinations just by going for, say, 0.5, and then you can see pixelation like that. Again, it would be lovely if that was a seamless design because it would make a, be able to create a pattern from it very quickly. The oil paint, probably about the only one that's sort of like a creating a paint effect, which is actually quite an interesting one. So you've got here, you've got a variety of different options. You've got fine details, effects, strokes, multipliers, so you can apply it to create even more intense design, something like this. And again, it's another one of these ones where you probably might find creating multiple layers might actually generate something really quite interesting. Instead, this just generates a fairly similar effect each and every time. You can't modify either the brush strokes either. That would be a nice feature. You can see the stroke size, you can modify that. So maybe reduce the, the X down to zero and then apply like that to create a slightly different effect. It creates a sort of halo around that. But I'm just going to put it to about 0.17 and you can see that that will create, again, a slightly different effect. Apply it multiple times. Build up a complex design and you can distort it in all kinds of different ways. And again, background size and shadow and so on. There's a variety of different options. Whether it actually makes something look like an oil painting, I think it's debatable. You've also got glass filters, which is a very nice one, creating. Now, a glass filter, of course, is in, available already in the filter gallery. But here, you've got this, got a number of features. Unfortunately, you can't bring in a file. So again, you've just limited to the designs that are available. Thing, But it does create nice misty effects. You've got relief effects, glass sharpen, and combination again generates some interesting results. You can see the sort of design here. Something similar you could, of course, create in the filter gallery already. Sphere Eyes is an interesting one. Again, it's a sort of very unusual transform. It's been done before, of course. You can find many plugins and filter effects that create this sort of sphere effect. It's always a, an interesting one, but of course, Fairly old-fashioned effect, not probably that practical. But again, with all these, always you can combine them, change the various things, and find maybe your own particular design. You think, yes, that's pretty good. Maybe I could use that with maybe multiple copies of that, so you could build up a nice sort of ray of these designs all across. And also you can modify the background colour, so you might not want black, but you might go for red instead, and you can see it will generate a red design behind. You've also got the sticker effect. Now the sticker effect is very similar to the previous one as well. You've got this, I'm not certain why this generates that. Likewise with the other one. Would be nice to scratch, the scratch one there. Very, very similar, but still creates an interesting sticker effect. Again, whether it actually looks like a sticker on is debatable. But you can see there's sticker filter and you can expand that out and you've got outline thickness. At least that does offer the, the outline thickness. So you can change that. You can put it down to zero and then obviously you get a slightly thin line. Maybe apply it multiple times again to create some interesting designs that way. Also, sticker damage as well as glue re residue. You've obviously got this, so you might decide, well, let's just change that to a yellow. And again, maybe apply it multiple times, combine different residues over it and again and again. You've also got a vintage one. Now, the vintage one probably is fairly limited, but it's got a nice vignette feature. So you can always just change a vignette and you can change the distance. And you can also change the grain. Unfortunately, it's just very limited to a very basic grain. And you can just tweak these settings 
to multiple places and also changed the colour of the vignette. Probably for me, the favourite one, symmetry. Really nice feature, something that really should be in Photoshop normally in one of these ones. Just go to filter and use a standard symmetry effect. Not so why there's no mirror symmetry effect, but at least we've got finally got something with symmetry. And what are you going to do? You've got here cut it. Not particularly keen on the words there, but you can see the effect. It cuts it, whereas this one blends. So you can see it just nicely. Instead of that sharp line, it blends it. And you can change the amount, so you can go for, say, 18. And you can see the result of that. And again, it's another one of these ones where you don't have to apply it just once. Maybe apply it multiple times. Create multiple layers and apply them again and again to build up more complex designs. And again, you've still got the same with the shift and scale and transform. And you can see then you can create sort of pattern designs very quickly from this as well. Also, you've got inverted blended mirror to create a slightly different mirror effect. As with all these filters, you can always go to layer and then you can just flatten image. Now, this effect can be applied with shapes, with type, with any image, multiple layers in many different ways. So it's really worth checking out this parametric filters and it's available at the moment in the Adobe Photoshop beta. So you could use it there. Hopefully, at some point, it will be available in standard Photoshop. Really looking forward to being able to use it in that and using it obviously all the time. Most of the time, of course, I use the main Photoshop, but this beta one is great for this parametric filters effect. If you've got any questions, as always, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. I'm always adding new videos all the time about Photoshop, but also, of course, lots and lots of videos about Painter, as well as Affinity Photo and many other applications. Bye.